Yeah, thanks very much, Paul, and good, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us today. What I thought I might do is start with a bit of an introduction as to what it is we actually do. And uh, Respiri, as was pointed out, is a medical device and e-health organization that pivoted its business exclusively to the highly lucrative United States market. We don't operate anywhere else but in the US. And the reasons for that will become clear as we go through this particular presentation. And it's not just because it's about 30 times the size of the Australian marketplace, but because the services that we operate in, that is remote patient monitoring, are completely reimbursed in the United States. So there is very little, if any, out-of-pocket expense for patients when they get put on this program by their physicians. Our lead in device is Weezo, a very sophisticated electronic stethoscope that is very, very easy to use and is reimbursed, as I said. You place it on your tracheal knock like so, and the instruction to the patient is breathe normally. Uh, 30 seconds of breathing is Bluetooth to a smart device. That's analyzed by our AI algorithms and identifies abnormal breath sounds, wheeze, uh, which is something that the doctors ask their patients about right now. And it's one of the lead indicators for how well a respiratory disease is being managed uh, by keeping that wheeze rate down to an acceptable level. We recently acquired one of our long-term partners, Access Telehealth, who are a provider of remote patient monitoring solutions, not just for respiratory disorders, where Weezo fits in, but across all major chronic diseases, cardiovascular, diabetes, and others. So we now have the ability to deliver an entire suite of solutions, which is exactly what the United States customers want from us. They want a solution not for a disease state, they want a solution for their high-risk patients. And that's exactly what we do. I'm pleased to be able to announce that we secured two more clients in the United States uh, just recently. And uh, that's going to lead to about a half a million dollars in recurring revenues, US dollars, of course, to our bottom line as we move forward. So it's a very exciting time for us. We've doubled our projected uh, annualized revenues of late. And there's a whole heap of other... and anticipated announcements that we hope to be making as we move forward. So if we could go a couple of slides forward, please. I'm pretty proud to be able to say that Respiri is really built on a number of unique company firsts in the United States. We are the first FDA approved device for use in, in managing remote patient monitoring with WIS as a, as a predominant uh, lead indicator for how well a patient's being um, managed. We're also the first organization that were reimbursed for remote patient monitoring in respiratory disorders. And with the acquisition of Access Telehealth, we are now the only organization in the United States of Australian origin that's delivering an end-to-end -end remote patient monitoring solution to its customers. Everything that I'm talking to you about today has been achieved in just over a year and a half when we first launched in the United States. So things are moving very quickly for us. We have customers who are generating revenues for us. We have customers in the order of about 16 at the moment, and that is growing as I speak. So I'm, we're on a very good trajectory because we are delivering a service that is lacking in the United States and something that uh, we see as a great advantage two organizations that are under increasing pressures to deliver better medicine for less money, and importantly, in a way that's very convenient to their patients. And the way to do that across the board is to make sure that healthcare is delivered in the cheapest form possible, and that's at home. Next slide, please. I've been in the game for a long time now. I mean, I've been in healthcare for 35 years. And really one of the things and narrative that hasn't changed over that period of time is that healthcare is still a very reactive industry. We basically wait for patients to get ill and then we do something about it. Now, that in itself is not a, is not a success story when it comes to trying to keep people out of hospital. And that sort of reactive model is something that we believe that remote patient monitoring 
can help alleviate by providing physicians and their nominated healthcare partners with real-time information from the real world about their patients and how well they're being managed. And importantly, by exception only, identifying those patients whose conditions are being are deteriorating, I'm sorry. And to be in a position to do something about that deterioration before there is a problem. Readmission rates are a big issue in the United States and hospitals in the United States, over 60% of these hospitals today are being fined by the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services. And these fines are quite significant. So we have a whole bunch of stakeholders who are very motivated to make sure that we do what it is we can to deliver a highly effective and cost-effective way of healthcare management that allows patients to take greater ownership of their condition, do something about it with the help of coaches, and make sure that physicians get adequate uh, reminders and alerts to when patients' conditions are deteriorating and do something about it before there's an issue. Next slide, please. It's important to note that with remote patient monitoring, it isn't just about a medical device. It's not just about this or a blood pressure cuff or an ECG. Really for an effective remote patient monitoring solution to work, you need three things. You need an easy to use device. This is easy. You need a platform that allows for data transfer between all stakeholders so people know what is happening with the patients, both good and bad, and a way of triaging that so that physicians only get alerted to those patients that require an intervention. So data that is actionable. And the third piece, no matter which way you look at it, you need a person to interact with the patient to help them understand when they're doing things well, to follow up on when they're not doing things that they're supposed to be, and very importantly, be very attached to the patient when there's a deterioration in their particular circumstances. And importantly, be able to triage that back to the physician who's managing that patient. As I said, all three of those aspects of remote patient monitoring are reimbursed in the United States. It's one of the only countries in the world where that's the case. Also very important to note is that physicians, healthcare organizations and insurers can outsource the entire remote patient monitoring program to somebody else. And as I said, we purchased one of those somebody else's in access. The market that we play in as well is not one to be sneezed at. The remote patient market in the United States is forecast to grow to almost $100 billion by 2026. So it's a very, very juicy market and a market that requires a sophisticated approach and a one-stop shop approach that fits into the needs of the clients whose patients need it. Next slide, please. As I said, we recently completed an acquisition of one of our partners who we've been working with now for over a year. And over that period of time, if you will, we've been conducting a due diligence process by working with them. So we know very well what it is that they're doing well and what it is that we can help them with. My own background, I started one of Australia's largest remote patient monitoring organizations in sleep apnea, uh, Healthy Sleep Solutions. We went on to command 40% of the Australian marketplace. Uh, we presented the concept to a company called ResMed, who became a cornerstone investor in our organization. We went on to become one of their largest customers in the Southern Hemisphere. So we know this space. We know what needs to be done to make it effective. And we know that uh, we are in a position to, to help drive growth organically with our partners, Axis, who now belong to uh, Respiri, and also deliver a solution that we know our clients want and insurers want. Next slide, please. The access acquisition has done one major thing to us. That is with Weezo, our medical device for respiratory disorders. That market in the United States is a, is a fairly healthy market with about 50 million patients with respiratory disorders. 
that are targets for us. The acquisition of access broadens that to about one in two Americans who have got a chronic disease of some sort that would qualify for remote patient monitoring. So the market that we've had uh, introduced to us through the acquisition is one that is much larger. And importantly, from our perspective, our access acquisition is still differentiated on the Weezo device. Because if you want to do remote patient monitoring in patients with respiratory disorders, whether that be asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, the only real device available to you that's easy to use, reimbursed, and reproducible is Weezo. That allows our partners access to be able to pitch an end-to-end -end turnkey solution when it comes to delivering a remote patient monitoring solution to healthcare providers and organizations that cover all of their high-risk patients, which is who we really do need to provide a very good solution to, to keep them out of hospital and reduce costs. Next slide, please. You know, the commercial prescription for us was this acquisition. The US market in remote patient monitoring is very fragmented. There is no national provider of remote patient monitoring services in the United States. So it is very fragmented, which obviously opens itself up to a number of other alternative opportunities, I should say, when we move forward. And no one's consolidated that marketplace. So it's an interesting thing to consider moving forward. But with the access acquisition that we've currently made, we now know that we have a solution that our clients want. We have remote patient monitoring solutions using different devices in addition to Weezo to handle all high risk patients in the major disease standards. We have also purchased with the access acquisition a remote patient monitoring uh, platform that is device agnostic. So we can put whatever device we want into the solution that our customers want and deliver exactly what it is they need together with our clinical staff to help better manage those patients and make sure that they're adhering to what the doctor wants them to do. We're already integrated into those pack into the package, so we are in a position to kick, kick off very, very quickly. And you would have seen from the new customers that we've onboarded, we are in a position to deliver services immediately. The economics of the, uh, of the acquisition are also very attractive. Originally, our recurring revenues, that is pa dollars per patient per month with Weezo alone through our partners is about 10 to 20 US dollars. The acquisition of access increases that to up to $100 per patient per month. Reminder, all of this is underpinned by reimbursement and the people reimbursing are very, very motivated to make sure the remote patient monitoring actually works because the insurers know the more that they move healthcare delivery out of high cost tertiary institutions into the home, the more money they save. From our perspective, we now only need to have 9,000 active remote patient monitoring patients as opposed to 30,000 under the old model to break even. And we anticipate breaking even in the second half of 2024, and that is calendar year, which is not that far away. We've got the team to be able to deliver this. As I said, everyone that's been in the team has worked in this space, and we have a US-based presence with a series of very, very skilled people in this area. Important to note that in many markets, human investments in healthcare are often sunk leaders in the reimbursement market of the United States, Every clinical staff member that we employ costs us roughly fifty to seventy thousand dollars and delivers about a quarter of a million dollars in revenues. So, for a people-driven business, an eighty percent margin on people is a pretty good result. Next slide, please. I mentioned we've signed up two new clients. Uh, one in Alabama, the other in Hawaii. So they're the first clients we've got in those states. And as I said, our recurring revenues that have been announced in just the last two months add about 1.1 million in recurring revenues to our bottom line forecast for uh, in annualized uh, revenues 
in the next year. So we're really excited about that. And we've already commenced onboarding patients that have been engaged into the program. I announced a number of other deals that were made last month. So the total there, as I said, is about 1.1 million in new recurring revenues on top of what it is that we're already generating ourselves and also through the acquisition of access. This is pretty exciting. And as I said, our break even is 9,000 patients and we are well on the way with more than 1,000 patients enrolled in our programs already. Next slide, please. Near-term catalysts, and these are the really exciting things. We are in the final throes of, of finalizing contracts with two insurers. Uh, one of those insurers I'll focus on is basically starting in one state with three and a half thousand patients. And this is a risk share agreement where we will be paid not per service, but per member. So the initial contract for one of these the insurers, which should be finalized in the not too distant future, is for three and a half thousand patients where we will be generating about $40 US, that is per member. Their recurring revenue is about $1.68 million per annum, that's US. Much more importantly, there's a very clear line of sight for this insurer to 40,000 patients across multiple states where the revenue streams from that approach 20 million US in recurring revenues. Now, the timeline to this, once the contract is signed, and it, it, it isn't signed yet, but where, as I said, in the final throws, is not two or three years down the track, but in 12 months from execution. The only way we'll, we will not get there is if we don't deliver. So this is a really exciting transformational um, contract for us that I hope to be announcing in the not too distant future. We're also working with accountable care organizations who also have risk contracts with health insurers. And they are original, initially going to generate about a million US in recurring revenues but a clear line of sight to 14 million. So in 12 months, everything going to plan and assuming we sign the contracts, we have a very clear line of sight to an additional $34 million recurring revenues from the clients that uh, we're pretty close to finalizing now. And I do stress, there's not a deal until there's a deal, but I'm really confident. <laughs> Next slide, please. There's a whole heap of uh, announcements that we're very uh, pleased to be able to say we anticipate making over the next quarter. So before the end of the year, there are quite a number there, which I'll let you read. I've spoken to the real critical ones of late, but uh, there is a lot happening with the organization. And, you know, we will be everything going to plan announcing recurring revenues of up to 5 million US by the end of this year. And finally, next slide, sorry. The business that we launched in the United States is not the business that it is today. It was always part of our plan to end up where we are today, but we were always going to use this little fella to get us there. A point of differentiation, a device that nobody else has got, FDA approved, well accepted by the respiratory community in the United States, and still a point of differentiation, even with the access acquisition. We go from delivering RPM, remote patient monitoring, in lungs only, to all major disease states, which is what our clients want. So with that, thank you very much. And I'll hand over to you, Paul, for any questions people may have. Thanks, Martin. A fascinating presentation and, uh, and clearly been uh, a, a busy time for you as of, uh, as of late. So let's just, uh, first question is, uh, just remind us, what's the status of uh, the access acquisition, uh, the integration? How, how's that going? The well, the good news about the integration is we've already been working with them for some period of time. So we are now in the throes of bringing the organizations together and integrating systems. Those system integrations have happened over a period of time. Like anything, um, I've been through a few of these things in my life. Some things work well, other things don't quite go to plan. But the good news is, and I think testament to this are the new deals that we've signed. None of these deals, the five deals that I've just announced, would have been signed without access and us working together. So even though I wish I could say it's humming well along beautifully well without any problems whatsoever, uh, what I can say, it's humming along well enough for us to be able to uh, 
provide our clients with a sense of comfort that we'll be able to deliver what it is we've promised to deliver. So there are still some teething problems, I'll be honest, but the major issues around integration have been overcome. And now it's about that old cliche, Paul, you know, forming, storming, norming, performing. Well, let's just say our job today is to minimize the storming phase and get into that norming phase as fast as we possibly can. So, but no red flags. That's good to hear. And uh, you talked about this and basically your recent announcements. The Equus acquisition is already delivering new business in the remote patient monitoring segment. Yes. What additional opportunities can you see Access delivering for you? Well, one of the reasons that uh, we're at a table with two significant national insurers in the United States is because of the one-stop shop that our Access acquisition provides us with. Now, in saying that, the reason we were originally invited to talk to these insurance companies was on the back of this little fellow. They didn't have a solution that was adequate for respiratory patients. And when Access and us went and pitched the deal to the insurers, they found it very attractive that we could provide a remote patient monitoring solution across all major disease states. And no matter which way you cut it, no matter how much I love this thing, the Weezo device is, is, is my baby. Unless you can handle cardiovascular risk as part and parcel of a risk share arrangement for remote patient monitoring, you can't get to the table. That is something that Access has brought to us. And the devices that we need to do that are commoditized. They're freely available, but it's not the device, as I said, uh, Paul, that is the secret source. Our ability to engage client, engage customer, keep them compliant, keep them persistent, and importantly, escalate when there's an issue to the doctor is our secret source. And that's really important. Last thing a doctor wants is this thing going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> they will tell you, you know what they'll tell you. So I think, I think that was a long-winded way of saying that's the value proposition that Access brings to us. Gotcha. And there's a question here. I'm not sure you can disclose it, but uh, what is the gross profit margin that uh, Respiri expects to receive per patient that, enrol that enrolls in your RPM programs? I, I, I've sort of given you a bit of a feel for where we're at with regards to what it is that the human component of delivery is. The SaaS component and device components are, oh, let's face it, they're all almost essentially all gross margin. The people component is around 80%. So the gross margins of our business, even with the people involved, will be very, very attractive. And that's all built on the back of reimbursement. And you've got to love the Americans. They'll put their money where their mouth is. They understand the value of preventative medicine, and they understand the value that remote patient monitoring plays in that. And they're prepared to reward doctors for doing it. And let's just say, if we help the doctors do it, we get a bit of a reward as well. So I hope that that's about as, as much of a detail as I can give you. Uh, that's good. Uh, just to close up, look, you, you, you said at the beginning that you're 100% at the moment focused uh, in, the, uh, in, 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 in the US. But once you've got a stronghold in the US, uh, are there any other uh, countries that you would target uh, post that, uh, you know, that, you know that, the next move, so to speak? Yeah, look... The United States is huge. It's a behemoth. We And I really can't afford to take my eye off the ball because I wish I had the resource, the cash and everything else to do it everywhere, right? Um, but we're steadfastly focused on the US. We are, the other obvious markets for us are the reimbursed markets in Europe and the UK. And part and parcel of my job is to make sure that when I'm looking for cost-effective ways of being able to enter those marketplaces, whilst ring-fencing all of that from the United States and the team delivering there. So our next targets really are those markets there where remote patient monitoring is reimbursed. UK, Germany, France are the big three. Lots still to learn there. I have had the pleasure of working in that part of the world, so I know a little bit about that space. But the challenge for me is to find a partner that we can do work with over there and ring fencing that from the United States. Well, Martin, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. Just conscious of time. There are some other questions. If you could answer those once you go offline, that would be fantastic. But uh, right. thanks for presenting. We'll keep a close eye on the story. 
and we'll get you back on towards the end of the year. Many thanks. Thanks, Matt.